Blog Talk Radio. Are you ready to take a bite out of the competition? Are you looking for ideas to make your business better? Welcome to the Core Business Show with Tim J.K., sponsored by Apple Capital Group. At the core of every successful business, you'll find people making a difference. And with each episode of the Core Business Show, we talk with those people, examine those ideas, and explore the strategies that make them special. Now, the host of the Core Business Show, Tim J.K. Good morning. Welcome to another edition of the Core Business Show. I'm Tim J.K., your host. Today, we're going to talk to Houston Business Executive. The topic is using peer advisory groups to build your business. Our special guest is R.D. Yoda. He's going to be on the phone in a few minutes. If you have any questions or want to join the conversation, you can go ahead and call in at 347-324-3460, or you can post a question in the chat room. R.D., welcome to the program. Hey, good morning. How are you doing, Tim? Great. I listened to your program, I think, over the internet to your local station, and I get a lot of information out of it. I say I have to have you on the show. I really appreciate you coming on. Uh, you're quite welcome. I'm used I, guess to begin, I guess to begin with, kind of tell us about yourself and how you got started. Well, about, I can go way, way back, or I can go back just a few years. <laughs> I tell you what, I, I met my business partner 15 years ago. We sat on a sales lead round table, and I found that there was a, a good opportunity to do things through peer advisory and mastermind forums and so forth. So we had we were uh, we sat on a small round table and there was only about five or six of us, which eventually became like two or three. Well, we found such good synergy that we decided to work together and we worked on several projects. First, one of the things that we first worked on was a, an organization called Membership Services of America, where we went across the nation helping organizations such as chambers and business development organizations with their membership development, including new memberships retention, and then it blossomed and branched out into further expansion in our services, which included project and consultation work and so forth. So we worked with organizations as small as 50, upwards of 6,000, which was one of the largest chambers in the United wow. States. Doing a lot of time on the, on the road and decided to step out of that world. <laughs> Found ourselves on the road anywhere from 15 to 15 to 19 days out of the business days out of the month. And so we decided to scale it back. I found out that we're, there was a pressing need here in Houston which is where I'm located, and decided to form an, our own organization. So uh, nine years ago, we formed an organization called Houston Networking News that really focused on the social aspect of networking. I found out there was a lot of people wanted to come to our activities, so we would have several hundred people that would attend. We eventually uh, added breakfasts and luncheons and other meetings and so forth. And then here in the, in the last a couple of years, we've added our executive component, which really focuses on peer advisory, training, development, and so forth. Because what we found is that doing networking and business development is good, but having an accountability partner or a team or a structure in your environment for you is a great way to do the business. In fact, it's a, it's a, it's a trend that's really ticking upward. It's cost effective, uh, mm-hmm. it relieves stress and tension on you and your business, and there's just so many great benefits of peer advisory. Tell us about that process because – there are some people have different comfort levels in dealing with peer advisory. I mean, you go to a social networking event and you just, what can I say? <laughs> what do you say? Because a lot of people are just so nervous and it's like, it's scary if that makes sense to you. Until yeah, exactly. you get into it, once you yeah. get into it and you know some people, it's a lot easier, but at the very beginning, it's, it's a scary thing. Yeah, the whole thing, it really, it, 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 I'll tell you what it mostly depends on. It depends on the organization that you're involved with and the leadership that's involved. And so these are the two key components. As you know, with the advent of technology, we have a lot of folks who are called experts and they think that they're really good at something and they will tout their the level of ex- area of expertise, but you're not really sure. One of the things that we did to ensure that, that this wouldn't happen with us in our organization is the fact that we took a long time in building out the platform and the program. In fact, our business plan, and this defies traditional logic. Now, I'll tell this for our listeners who are tuning in from a uh, small business perspective, if they're looking to to present something that's bank ready, you want to scale it back anywhere from just to a few pages. If you're looking to apply for lines of credit and loans and so forth, so you want to scale back your business plan considerably. But for our, our sakes and our purposes, what we did is we built a pro, we built a, a business plan that had a lot of different components to it. it had what if scenarios, growth projections, market research, intricacies of our of our of our program, facilitator, executives, and director responsibilities and so forth. 
So our business plan, when it all came down to it, I hate to use the word business plan because people think, oh, that's too, that's too much. But it, the plan for this is over 140 pages long. It took us a year to build it out. We built it without with expert advice. Another thing is that I recommend if, if you're working a lot in your business, you need a set of fresh eyes to look in on your business from time to give you an objective viewpoint and not just the traditional yes man who'll say everything's great. So that's one of the things we did to make sure that the program was solid to ensure a level of comfort like you were alluding to a second ago. The second thing is mm-hmm. that we vet our facilitators and people that we work with extensively. A good facilitator or director of our of a peer advisory group will really take the responsibility on his or her shoulders and just and hold their people accountable and make sure that they're flowing properly and that they're getting the results that they want. It's really about leadership when it comes to peer advisory. And then the final thing is what you alluded to. It's, it's really, I think, people have a, they kind of they draw back on the peer advisory component because they think, oh my gosh, I'm going to move into an environment where I have to disclose all my personal and business information. Well, the thing about it, well, one of the things that we do to circumvent that is that we, uh, we have people sign a, a non-disclosure and a confidentiality agreement to ensure that people walk into this environment and they won't disclose this information outside of that meeting or outside of that setting. So you walk in there and you, you know already that there's a level of comfort that's been achieved by the business work that we've done prior to, to this, to the first meeting, or if you will. So we have a lot of folks that are mm-hmm. apprehensive who walk into the meeting. After they get to that first meeting, they understand it and, and they're sure that they, have to, they don't have anything to worry about because our main focus is if you're not growing, we're not growing. So we want to make sure that it happens. Wow. What particular challenges do you see in today's environment that will cause a business really not to grow or things that you see in common within your particular group that are challenges for them? Yeah, I, I, there's two driving factors I'm really seeing here. We did a presentation on this yesterday to a, a group of business professionals here in Houston. There's one of two things that are really killing our, our drive when it comes to our business owners. I'll talk from an executive standpoint, I, I talk a little bit different, but let me talk about the business owners for uh, for a second. If you're a business owner who's listening today, here's something that's really important. One is ignorance. Please don't be offended by that word, but the fact is if you're not doing market research, you're not understanding the competition, you're not understanding the latest technology and trends, you're ignorant to the things that are changing. And if you're not reacting or adapting or staying ahead of the curve, which is what I prefer to do, then you're really falling behind. Trust me, the market will transition with or without you, and your competition will do the same as well. So if you're not reading constantly and you're not understanding the latest markets and trends, especially those that revolve around your particular industry, you have to do that. I'm subscribed anywhere. I, I lost count. I'm subscribed to roughly 25, 25 to 30 different newsletters and other email features that I get on a daily basis. There's probably you know, 10 to 15. So I'm in the constant know of what's going on in my industry. That's industry specific. Then in general business mm-hmm. terms, and I'm subscribed to another 15 or 20. I, do I read through them all word by word? No, I can't. I don't have that time. But I skim through there just to make sure that I'm not missing anything. The second thing that I, that we're finding here is that something that's a real drawback. And so I see this a lot. Okay. It's the ego. Now, these are offending words that I use when it comes to business development and, and, and executives and owners and so forth. Is the word ignorant, the words ignorance as an ego. We touched on the ignorance aspect. That can be fixed. The ego can, the ego aspect can as well. What we're finding is a lot of people think that they have it under control. And they sit through a presentation, they realize, well, here's some information that I have already. But what they don't realize is there's structured programs and systems built by the host organizations to ensure your success. So if you're, you're walking into a presentation or to a meeting or surrounded by other executives or professionals and you think it have, you have it all under control, this will absolutely destroy your business or drive it downward. You have to have a humble wow. spirit about this. You could be brash. You could be aggressive. But you need to have accountability partners and people a good team that will support you and keep you grounded. How do you be accountable to yourself? Well, one of the ways that you're accountable, here's what I, one of the ways that I do is I write down my goals daily. <laughs> it keeps me okay. grounded in the fact that if I have a, say I, but if we have a, a day where it's down, one of my philosophies is that any day that we have sales is a good day. So uh, if I chart my goals and look back over what I did, in fact, that's what we're doing right now. I realized that nine years ago with our networking organization that we have, <clears throat> We've done hundreds and hundreds of events, and we've had over over fifteen over fifteen thousand event attendees. So I know how many people come through those doors. But when it comes to it, when it comes to being grounded, chart your goals, write down your goals daily, and not just a once a month thing. But write them down daily and go back and review them. That'll help you give some perspective on what you've accomplished and what you need to accomplish. That's a good way mm-hmm. to stay grounded. Wow, we're gonna take a break real quick. We'll be back in a moment with RDO. There, we're gonna take a station break. You're listening to the Core Business Show. 
sponsored by Apple Capital Group. Apple Capital Group in Jacksonville, Florida, is a commercial lender that specializes in asset-based loans, equipment leasing and financing, invoice financing, commercial real estate loans, and asset-based financing in the U.S. and Canada. Apple Capital Group is a direct lender that lends on their private equity investment portfolio. 90% of most loans are decided within two hours and vendor funding within 24 hours after documents are completed with a one-page application. No slow no's, just a quick decision and a fast yes. To get more information about lending from Apple Capital Group, call 866-611-7457. That's 866-611-7457 to speak with one of our loan specialists. Or visit us right now at applecapitalgroup.com. Welcome back to the core. Once again, here's Tim Jacquet. Our topic today is using peer advisory groups to build your business with RD other. RD, when we talk about really, you mentioned sales, which is the fuel of any business, and some people get so wrapped up in everything else and not really look at sales. They can need to continue to make sales in order to have a life blood for their business. But they get so bogged down, let me get certified for this, let me get into this, let me get into this thing. They get so distracted. And it's one of these things, can you take a person and say, hey, slow down. Think about what's really important that's going to keep you alive. Have you ever noticed those type of things that keep distracting people that they're not focused on what's really important? I'm sorry, what were you saying? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's that's, just they focus yeah, that, on something. That's exactly what I'm talking about. The fact that you're distracted by a lot of different factors. I, I guarantee you right now, I'm going to I'm gonna expose the host here just for a second because I'm doing the same thing. Okay. I guarantee you there's a computer in front of you right now, right? Yeah. Okay, there's a computer in front of me right now as well. In in a matter of the last 10 seconds, we've established, I don't want to call them distractions, but you're on the radio, there's a computer in front of you, there's a, I'll give you an example in my in my case, there's a clock ticking on my left-hand side, there's a computer right in front of me, I, 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 there's a fan going as well. Now, if I'm, now, these are just general things. Now, imagine if I multiply at times many factors and I apply it to the business world and our business companies. This is happening mm-hmm. every single day with all types of executives, leaders, and business owners. We have people that are being distracted by all different types of things, especially for the CEO or the executive or the business owner. Everything from HR, compliances, employee productivity, sales, accounting, all these different things that are distracting us from our core focus. So how do we overcome those things? Well, we streamline our processes. We find the ways that we need to build things out in the right manner. We assign a good leader delegates and gives uh, assignments to his or her team members to ensure, and team leaders rather, to ensure that things get done in the right manner. So it's a matter of just of being organized and structured. Now, these things are bandied about quite a bit. In fact, there's all kinds of books. You can go to any of the local bookstore or go online and find these books, find these books or these, especially now with e-books. But the fact is mm-hmm. that if you're not making, if you're not making strides or you're not doing something where someone's holding you accountable, a good CEO is held accountable by, by his, his sub leaders, if you will, and some other peers. So I think that gives you a good example of, of what you're talking about. Compared to your organizations, to organizations like BNI, I mean, it's really expensive. Some people complain about. Is there certain systems that you have in place that kind of will take a different approach than versus BNI? BNI is a great organization. However, it, it puts everybody on the spot every single week, every time they meet, that you produce something, that you get us something. Uh, you've seen those meetings before. In your type of situation, yours is, is totally different. If you put them side by side, when you talk about your particular organization, the peer advisory groups, how yours differ from theirs? Yeah, here because I know we have national nationwide listeners, and I'm careful to make sure that we don't disparage any organizations. And also, sure. I know Ivan. I also know Ivan Meisner personally, personally want to be careful about that. <laughs> but our thing is, I think that sure. here's my philosophy on the business community, and I'll tell you about about Houston. And I don't know how many uh, how many Houston listeners you have, but I'll tell you a little bit about Houston to kind of get an indication. Houston is a top 20 global market or with the fastest growing market in the United States. That's an indicator of how good things are here in Houston. But the fact is that the United States is a great place to do business. Now, that being said, it's just a matter of applying the right type of system. See, if you have a good system in place, you can take that anywhere. But when it comes to peer, when it comes to peer advisory components and making comparisons to other organizations, BNI is focused on the networking aspect. And there's also, there's also other organizations. Actually, the value proposition for certain networking groups and the, uh, the cost effectiveness is very reasonable as compared to some of the executive peer advisory. There are peer advisory organizations that run anywhere from 500 to a couple thousand dollars a month when it comes to executive peer advisory 
and networking and development different types of groups. So what we're mm-hmm. finding is that there's a market for it. I'm sure I'm probably exposing myself here, but there's a market for it because there are a lot of executives and people in leadership positions that need and uh, need guidance and help in their in their various uh, endeavors and their uh, their work ethics. Uh, what we found is when you add the peer advisory component, especially for the executives, I'll give you an example. When peer advisory is added to business owners, their acumen and into their into their into the system of building business and being accountable it can impact revenue. Gross revenue is 19 to 43 percent. There's not a business owner out there who wouldn't like to have their gross revenue impacted by that significant amount of uh, significant amount of numbers. So what we're finding is people are looking for ways to get better. We really just, I tell you what, our unique selling proposition when it comes to business people is quite simple. We have mm-hmm. peer advisory, we have networking, we have training. It's really, I say three words, but it's peer advisory too, but it's those three things, and we really have simplified it. So how do we help people? We help people with a system that we've created for networking so people can exchange leads and referrals. And this is not a watered-down process like a social mix or whatever, but it's a process where we, there's a system in place to, for us to understand how to generate business, business through the person we contact as well as their contacts. There's also the training component because we want to make you better. As you alluded to earlier, the sales cycle and driving revenue and is really important these days. But what good does it do if you can't manage it or you can't make yourself better? So we include the training component to what we're doing. And we plan out wow. content many months in advance. It could be like any of the topics. It's a, whatever topic you want to pick, we have different things that apply to it. And then finally, which we think is our lead in, is the peer advisory component. It's the advice, counsel, and wisdom of your peers in a controlled and structured setting while doing it confidentially. So these things are the, the things that we combine here. Because what we're finding in the marketplace is there are indiv- these individual components are offered, but not all in one single setting. So that's what we want to do. We want to make you better, make you more money, and then have you accountable at the same time. Wow. Anything you would like to leave us with and your advice regarding using peer advisory groups and also about your organization, website, contact information? Yeah, exactly. Okay, what if you're looking to join a peer advisory group or organization, here's the first thing you need to look for. Uh, look for vision statements. You also look for the leadership and also understand what the vetting process is for for them accepting members and their facilitators. It's very important. If they're not credentialized and they don't have experience, like right now, you can go to my LinkedIn profile and look at some things that I've done over the past. I have all these different type of endorsements and recommendations and so forth that LinkedIn utilizes. I have the credibility because I'm, as you, like you, I'm, I've been on the radio for, I don't know, the last six, seven years through either CBS or Salem Broadcasting. But and, but I, what, I, what you need to do is, if you're the listener, you need to credentialize who you're working with. Ask them questions. If they can't answer the questions from, that you present to them in a particular meeting or presentation online or whatever the case may be, that's a good indicator that they're not really structured. I had someone, we had a presentation yesterday. I asked people to ask me as many questions as they like. We have an answer for every single thing that they, that they can put out there. And if we don't, make that offering and what people are going to see is they're going to see through there that we don't we're not the true experts that we profess to be so i ask mm-hmm. people do you have anything else do you have anything else i'll ask it several times over and so we're able to answer these questions because we have a plan a system and a, st- and a structured organization in place so those are the things i look for vet your organization vet your leaders before you step into a peer advisory group or organization perfect and uh how we contact how can we contact you and your organization in houston yeah we are expanding out we're let me tell you about our Houston effort. For those who are listening in, in Houston or, or have no people, we're always looking for new executives and leaders who are serious about business development and becoming better. It's HoustonBusinessExecutives.com. It's HoustonBusinessExecutives.com. There'll be a major announcement. In fact, we're going to celebrate our ninth anniversary here in about three weeks, and I'm going to make a major announcement about the expansion of our organization to other markets. Wow. Yeah, so we're looking to get out there and, and help a lot of people, but the parent organization here in Houston Business Executives dot com. I give you there's some articles, there's all kind of there's some white papers there, there's different things on uh, on what we do and just good general information on peer advisory and networking. So a lot of articles there, but we'd love to talk to you and just visit the website and just click on. We have a newsletter that comes out and we have people from all over the country who subscribe to it. But uh, you can just click on where it says uh, subscribe to the newsletter and we'll be glad to include you. And we'll give you hints and tips on on how to do business and make yourself better as an executive or as a leader. Wow. All right, really thank you so much for coming on to the program and sharing this with us the last 20 minutes about you and your organization. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Tim. It's a pleasure being on. 
Uh, same here. Take care. Okay. Again, it's been another production of the Core Business Show with Tim J. Kagan. Download this episode on iTunes on Blog Talk Radio. Uh, everybody, take care. Have a great day. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to the Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet. For a free quote on equipment leasing and financing, visit our website, applecapitalgroup.com. That's applecapitalgroup.com. And fill out the information to receive your free quote. We hope you'll join us for our next episode. And remember, you can always get to the core via iTunes. You'll find all our previous episodes there. Thanks again for listening to the Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet.